it is. That's right. Here it is. This is the Oxford vaccine. It's in uh, peer-reviewed form and it was just published uh, December 8th. So this is kind of a big deal because it's our first chance to really get in and look at this. Now, let me tell you right now, this is above my pay grade. There is a lot of subgroup analysis and stuff going on here and we'll get a much deeper dive coming up later. But I just want to highlight a few things. Remember this was a chimpanzee virus. So this is different than the ones we've been hearing about from Pfizer and Moderna. This was a chimpanzee virus. Remember also that this was where there was kind of a screw up and they gave a half dose and then a full dose in a subgroup of patients. That subgroup of patients was in England. That subgroup of patients was 18 to 55. And that subgroup had the best efficacy of around 90%. Overall, it had an efficacy of about 70%. So the efficacy here doesn't look to be as good as the mRNA vaccines. Remember also, this was the study where, there's, where there was some transverse myelitis, but when they went back and they looked at those patients, it appears that that occurred by chance. One of the patients, for example, had multiple sclerosis in that arm. This was not a placebo-controlled study. This was a study that compared against um, the Menactor or the meningococcal vaccination. Um, this was done mostly in England and Brazil, but there was also some patients in South Africa. Not as much um, Hispanic or black patients as we'd like because they're the real high-risk group. And so this is uh, predominantly in the English group, uh, mostly white patients. But there is uh, some people of color in the Brazil group as well. So overall, it showed that the uh, vaccine was efficacious. It appears to be safe. There's also a lot of subgroup analysis because they also pooled all of the people where they did the initial vaccines just to see if it was efficacious if you got an immune response. And then later on, much longer than the sort of the 28 days later, like 60 days later, they started to re-vaccinate those people. And then they do some subgroup analysis and then they pool it all together. So the summary of this is it appears to be safe it appears to be efficacious in that half dose, full dose. It's not clear why that half dose, full dose was better than full dose, full dose. And they say, when they look at the analysis of this, it wasn't just the fact that they were a younger subset of patients and predominantly white in that half dose, full dose. And uh, we'll have to have our statisticians and other people look into that. But it's out there. You should check it out. You should go to places like This Week in Virology for further expert review of this. And we'll have Mike and Sanjay go into this in more detail a little later on. But I just want to let you know that it's out there. The other thing I should tell you, you had to be over the age of 18. And this was a study of whether you became symptomatic. It wasn't about transmission, although they say, again, in a subgroup with pretty wide confidence intervals, it looks like it reduced infectivity, but we don't know for sure. And it, do, it did look like that it reduced significant serious disease when they looked at that subgroup as well. So, go check it out. Boom.